Hi, this is Anthony Kwan. I'm one of the spine surgeons at Ortho Carolina, and I'm here today to talk to you about spinal disorders and spinal conditions. We're here at Central Piedmont Community College looking at the anatomage, a 3D virtual anatomy table. This is an exciting opportunity to utilize both a virtual platform to talk about these conditions, as well as introduce you as a patient opportunities as far as uh, knowing us and our team and the conditions that we treat. So the first thing that we generally pay attention to is just the overall, what we call balance of the spine. So we generally like the head to be above the pelvis, to be above the feet. This is what we try to either recreate or balance um, as we're doing uh, types of different spinal surgery. So as we're looking at it from the side, these little red boxes are the vertebrae or the bones. These white cushions in between are considered the discs and essentially in the spine, they function as shock absorbers uh, for the back and for the vertebrae. So now that we've looked at what a normal spine is, I think it's helpful to kind of know why one of you might seek one of our opinions and evaluation. And the primary reason why someone would come to see us is pain. That's usually the, the top of the list as far as symptoms go. Um, and just because you hurt your back lifting a couch yesterday doesn't necessarily mean that you have to rush to see a spine surgeon, uh, but certainly pain that's prolonged and not getting better with the usual means, anti-inflammatories, rest, ice, so forth, uh, would be a potential reason to come uh, see a spine specialist. Usually it starts off with a questionnaire or spine form that'll kind of go over a lot of the typical symptoms and conditions that we may be able to identify and treat, and that would be kind of step one. Uh, the second step is usually a physical exam, so we would have one of our providers um, examine your muscle strength, look at your spine, examine your reflexes, and your sensory exam to see if there are any changes that we can detect. Oftentimes, um, at this stage, we're maximizing our conservative care, so physical therapy, uh, short-term uh, anti-inflammatories, um, exercise programs. Um, these are some of the things that will institute uh, usually for kind of patients who have not had any formal treatment. Being a specialty center, we also see patients who have run the gamut of all these options and have done injections, have done therapy, uh, and are here kind of for that next level of care. Uh, and that often means surgery at this point. And really the goals of surgery are fairly simple. Um, it's really three things that we would operate on. Uh, one is nerve compression. So if you have a pinched nerve, the goal is to unpinch that nerve. Number two would be instability. If bones are out of place, the goal would be to stabilize that area. We call that a spinal fusion as far as potential surgery goes. The last would be deformity correction. And if we have a spine like this that is crooked and not in the right position, we often will utilize different surgical techniques to correct spinal deformity and make the spine straight. So at this point, what we'll do is actually look at real life examples of potential spinal pathologies and how they would present and how we would evaluate and treat these conditions. So this is a CT picture of a spine that has uh, a few problems. Uh, these little things over here are bone spurs or osteophytes. Uh, and these are indicative of degeneration and uh, wear and tear of that disc as well as the vertebrae. As you can see, uh, you may not be a surgeon, but you can certainly appreciate that the spine is, is crooked here. And this curvature is what we call scoliosis. If we're looking specifically at this disc, we can see that the disc up here is more higher than it is down here, and we get this asymmetric collapse of the disc. And not surprising if this side has less cushion, that's the side that we're gonna see the bone spurs or the osteophytes on. The nerves that are right back here can be affected by these bone spurs uh, and can cause further nerve compression uh, and pain symptoms associated with a pinched nerve. Uh, those mainly being pain down the leg, numbness down the leg, as well as potential weakness as well. So here we have bones that are actual human bones. So as the discs kind of wear down, uh, we have the foramen, which are these little holes, and that correspond to this area on here uh, that the nerves exit out of. So as the disc wears down, we have a squeezing of that hole, and all of a sudden the space for that nerve becomes very narrow to the point where you can get nerve compression. So as far as treatment goes, we typically would start off with 
uh, physical therapy as well as anti-inflammatories, mainly to get some of the inflammation down as well as get their back stronger and have our dedicated physical therapist to really work on the back. The goal is to increase mobility, strengthen the spine, strengthen the core so that it can take some of the pressure off the discs and support the spine better. And we often find that 90% of the time, that's all that patients need. Now, in those 10% of cases where patients may come back and they've been diligent with therapy, they've tried anti-inflammatories, oftentimes the next step would be injections. Usually these injections can provide uh, somewhat dramatic relief for patients, um, especially if they have areas of nerve compression and nerve inflammation. So we'll switch gears now to the neck, and this is a rendering of the most common surgery that we do in the cervical spine or the neck. So this is what's commonly referred to as a cervical fusion, and we often will identify the, the disc as a most likely culprit, but we also can see bone spurs or arthritic conditions that can cause compression of the spine as well as the nerves. So in this approach, it's actually a little bit unique in the sense that we go in from the front of the neck. We're not having to really cut muscle, cut bone to uh, do this type of surgery. So when we talk about surgery, as we're going in from the front, we'll actually go in there and take out the herniated or ruptured disc and often place a spacer uh, to maintain the separation between the bones. And to keep things uh, in place, we'll utilize a plate and screws to put up front uh, to stabilize the spine. This is the most common surgery that we do uh, and uh, often one of the most successful. Uh, just as a reference point, uh, this is the surgery that Peyton Manning had done and he was able to turn to professional football. Uh, and we have a lot of high level athletes as well as weekend warriors who can get back to full activity after these types of procedures. So this concludes our orthopedic anatomy series on the spine. I'd like to personally thank CPCC and our partners at Experience Anatomy for allowing us to utilize this amazing technology. If as a patient you have any of these symptoms or conditions or have concerns of any spinal disorders, feel free to reach out to us at Ortho Carolina or you can book directly at orthocarolina.com.